Anytime I get out of my state and start driving east into the other western states, I start looking for pronghorns, which is just something I've always done. I've always enjoyed doing it, and I, I like seeing them. I've never had the opportunity to hunt one. In New Mexico, it's very diverse. Landscapes can change from 12,000 feet to the deserts below sea level even. It's such a diverse state. Pronghorns as a species are incredible. They are the only one of their kind. You know, horned animals you think of, they start to grow after they're born and they continue to grow throughout their lifespan. And then if you think about antlered game, deer, elk, moose, things of that nature, they grow horns that progressively get larger and larger as they grow older, but they lose them every year and regrow them every year. But pronghorn also lose their horns every year and they regrow them every year. It's compressed hair. There's a couple of antelope species around the world. You read about them, you think about them, and they're very different. You know, you think, oh, well, I've got to go to a foreign country to see that. I've got to go to the steppes of Mongolia or something. No, we get it right here in North America. This is our really cool gem. What I enjoy most about hunting is just being out in the wide open, you know, in the wild, just to be able to get away from everything. I pretty much grew up hunting. My uh, grandfather was a government trapper for years, so we started hunting when we were very young with Hill. And my dad was also really into hunting, so we got to go hunting a lot, see all kinds of wildlife. I was invited on this hunt by a friend of mine, GP, who is the owner of Core Cases. And Core Cases is a gun case company and their bags, I love them. And he asked if I wanted to come down and hunt pronghorn with him. I obviously jumped at the chance. We're in a place called Wagon Mountain, New Mexico, and we're here to hunt pronghorns. It's a three-day hunt. It's really exciting uh, in the sense that this will be my first pronghorn hunt. Our outfitter has been doing this for 15 years, and this ranch, they know it very well. It's 30,000 acres, big, wide open expanse. You can see a long ways, which means the <laughs> the pronghorns can see a long way, which is a little scary. This is the very edge of the Great Plains, very southwesternmost portion of the Great Plains. We're very fortunate to be here. We're about to sit down and have some dinner. Looking forward to a good night's sleep. Uh, it's going to be a pretty early rise tomorrow. We've got some carne asada, some pollo asada, some calabacitas, some beans, rice, sopias, tortillas. A little bit of everything.
I'm Calvin Lyles. I'm a hunting guide in New Mexico. So I've been guiding for about 15 years now, and what I enjoy is meeting the new people, I'm making new friends, and uh, getting to take them out and showing them what we have to offer here in New Mexico. I pretty much grew up hunting. My uh, grandfather was a government trapper for years, so we started hunting when we were very young with him. And my dad was also really into hunting, so we got to go hunting a lot. Real pretty morning, no wind, good temperature. Be nice to get some cloud cover, or else it's probably gonna be pretty hot today. But other than that, I mean, heck, the hotter it gets, the more these antelope will go to water. So I'm okay with that. Once it warms up a little bit, the mosquitoes will go away too. <laughs> Looking forward to a great morning. This particular ranch is about 30,000 acres. This place looks pretty flat until you get out in it and start walking in it and driving in it. There's lots of little rolling hills that the animals can hide in and get in. This place is a bit challenging to hunt. More likely, your opportunity may be a long shot out here. So you need to come prepared to shoot a long distance. It's not a bad morning when you can drive for on a dirt road for literally less than three minutes and start seeing animals you want to actually have a look at. We're basically right almost in the middle of the ranch right now. And there's a great big bowl right here that we're going to drive through. And you can see a bunch of antelope right now scattered through there. So we just need to get a little closer, and get a better look at what's out here. big lake bottom back here and I've seen a couple bucks go off in that lake bottom so we need to get up here and get on the road and get a little closer and you can see what they are. We have a high population of antelope on this ranch and we try to manage that to where we only take the bigger and more mature antelope on this place. So we're looking for anything close to the 80 inch mark to take. For an antelope to get close to an 80 inch mark, it varies year to year. It depends on your weather, you know, whether your grasses are growing early when they're growing. And it may take them six years to become to that age. Looks like a pretty good bug. He's pretty tall. I'm gonna watch this one for just a second. I want him to turn. Another doe, another doe, another doe. It's pretty cool. There's about eight does, a single buck, a little young, very pretty. There's elk all over the world. There's sheep, bears, moose, all of which are here in North America and are well represented around the world. There is no animal anywhere on the planet like the pronghorn. And if there's an animal that that really is emblematic of the American West, I, I would say more than anything, it's the pronghorn. I know we talk about the bison as, uh, for me, it's the pronghorn. Every time I see one anywhere in, in the Western United States, I just, makes me very happy. Ooh, look at this guy come running. Whoo, young buck at 150 yards on my left.
we just walked up here. We were looking for one of the bucks that came over the top of this hill. We think we relocated him, but he's just not quite what we're after. We seen him from down there, probably a mile away. Him with these heat waves, you gotta get a little closer just to make sure. So we came over the top of the hill and they actually came to us to about, what, 360. Got a good look at him. And he's not quite what we're after, so we're gonna pass on him and go see if we can't find another one. The way we hunt an oak traditionally is just spot and stalk. I mean, you're going to do a lot of glassing, so if you come out, you need to bring the highest pair of binoculars you can get because you're going to do a, tons of glassing. The biggest thing with antelope is their eyesight. They depend on their eyesight to stay alive. They don't really depend on their hearing or sense of smell as much as their eyesight. So that's why they like to stay in this big, wide open country, and they're always on alert. So if they see you generally, they will take off. <laughs> yeah, they don't get the name Speed Goats for nothing. A couple other does that have entered this field just past this fence. There's what looks to be a pretty big pronghorn. He's still quite a ways out, but we're working our way to him. He's He's kind of got a little spot for himself picked out. It's in a little divot, and he's sort of pawing at the ground and, and saying, this is my area, and creating a spot, and the does are, are nearby, and hopefully he'll just ignore us and pay attention to the does and see how close we can get. basically slowly worked our way about 600 yards across this field, walking, sitting, walking, trying to get closer to this pronghorn that is not being particularly cooperative. He doesn't know that we're here, but he's in his own little sort of world, and our world and his world haven't collided yet. waiting on one over here that we want to look at get up. We got another one to our left, but we got does between us, so we're waiting on them to lay down or walk off. Just a waiting game right now. And we finally got within range to decide that he's he's not the animal we're after. We did it slow, he's not spooked. We haven't scared the other goats in the area, the other antelope in the area too bad. So we'll just sort of walk back out of here, head towards another pronghorn that we, we saw on our stalk into this one.
you spend a lot of time driving and looking and driving and looking, you're going to do that when you go antelope hunting. You're going to spend a lot of time doing that. There's a, there's a big pronghorn in here. We've seen a lot of pronghorn out here. Uh, this one is a pretty nice pronghorn. Now we've tried to get onto him. We left him for a little bit, went and looked around, just kind of saw some country, saw a few more pronghorn. And now we're, we're gonna sit here and kind of see what he does. But the reason we pulled out of here at midday was that it was so warm, it wasn't letting us get close enough to him to properly look at him and the heat shimmer was really causing a problem so you know I mean there's always kind of give and take I think I think we've got a pretty good shot of getting on him. So you're looking at this first goat and another one crossed the fence and come into the pasture and he's actually getting closer to us so we're gonna head right down the fence line here because he went behind a, a little draw. So we're gonna use that to our advantage, see if we can get closer to him. And if that don't work, we still have the other one out here. So we'll go see what happens. That other one's still out of sight right here. So we'll just work our way up to that draw. See if we can make that ridge yeah, top again. See the does, see the does, they're coming. It's too small a target right now looking at us. Wait, as soon as those does pass, I want them to turn left and stop. All right. Okay. Hold on. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna wait for them to stop. shot left. He's moving. They're not too spooked. All right. I'm just going to let them run out. See where they go. I'm going to come out of this bottom. Let me reposition. Where are they going? Are they going towards that water tank? Yep. They're going right towards that drinker. That drinker, okay. Four thirty-five. All right, here he comes. He's gonna do exactly what we want him to do. He's gonna come closer. He's gotta wait. Got him. Just find him. He never knew where we were. He never heard the shot. The bullet did its job. The guy did his job. 
After one failed attempt, and the hunter finally did his job. This worked out beautifully. You couldn't have planned it any better. Started in at 400 and missed, went out to about 1,200, and then he came right back in to about 400, and Ed made a, a perfect shot on him. be the only time I ever get to walk up on a pronghorn for the first time. Right. Enjoy it. <laughs> Look where we are. Oh, this is... Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. I mean that. Great job. Thank you. very much. Thank you for giving us this meat. Thank you for giving us this hunt. Thank you for being such an incredible creature that we have here in North America. We're very lucky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, brother. Congratulations. Great goat. God, he is beautiful. There's no other animal on this earth like this. He's the only one of his kind. Yep. The only one of his kind. And we have him here to hunt. Yeah, we're lucky. Yes, very lucky. Oh man, look at that. Look at those hooks. Yes. Look at that, brother. I mean, we shot a lot of pronghorns, but we didn't see any like this. No. And we worked pretty dang hard for it, so. Yeah. I mean, consider ourselves lucky. Yes, sir. Really thankful and, and honored and grateful to, to be fortunate enough to participate in something like this and fortunate enough that this still exists and that the people before me helped to allow this to exist. So I have two boys and I'm going to raise them to be hunters. I think it's very important that you get the youth involved in hunting, get them away from all the electronics there are today in the world. I think that uh, being a hunter or a guy that builds character, you have respect for the land, respect for the animals. You learn that by being out in the field. I'm a hunter, I believe, because I was raised that way. So that's why I think it's very important to introduce people to hunting. I don't know that if, if I would be a hunter if my granddad and my dad hadn't introduced me to hunting. You don't get these opportunities very often, so don't take it for granted. started yet. Give me a minute. It's been a while with Dustin. He's already telling me what to do. He just, just, we're gonna, we're gonna settle him down. He'll be all right in a minute. So, um, you know, and that's great. And I love doing that since a child, but now all of a sudden, what do I do with my hand? Um, Oh, so the one we were we were looking for, uh, looking at it the last three hours, trying to get closer. Three hours, dude. Give me a look. Oh, wow, no, we're Bro. not. We're taking our time. We're doing it right. <laughs> How long has it been? Up. Twenty minutes. <laughs> you are so full of horse hockey. I can't even be. <laughs> so somewhere between twenty minutes and three hours. <laughs> All right. Oh, what do you think? I agree. Well, you know, you, do you hear what that answer is? That's the answer of a man who's been a husband for a very long time. He didn't listen to a word I said. When I asked for his opinion, he knew that the right answer was I agree. As all, yeah, as all good husbands know, just agree. It's just say yes. I agree. Yes, dear. And so I just got yes, dear. Can I go back to enjoying this now? You have to. 